Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Got to get me in the picture here. There we go. Oh, hold on a second. I also got to do something else here. I got just so I can make sure that I don't get all screwed up here later on with my audio part of the show. I have to always check on things and make sure they're working and not working, and you know. And I don't have a guest uh, this half hour. So what does that mean? That means uh, I got to talk for the next half hour. And I really don't feel like talking for the next half hour. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just not feeling up to it. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll get going here. I've, I've got coffee tonight, which is bad because then I have to take a Xanax to put me to sleep because this is going to wire me out. Anyway, enough of my complaining. Uh, a bunch of things are, uh, are happening. Uh, that uh, maybe I can talk about. I'm going to be doing, um, I've got a friend, Walter uh, M. Sterling, he calls himself. I know him as Walter Sabo. He, for years, has been a, a consultant in the broadcasting business, and he started a show uh, on uh, Westwood One. And uh, he is taking, a, I guess, a weekend off in two weeks and asked me if I would do his show. Uh, and I initially said no. Uh, and my, I, there's reasons behind my saying no. I'm not playing hard to get or anything like that. But I haven't done regular radio in almost five years. And quite frankly, I don't know if I know how to do it anymore. You know? I just don't know if my day hasn't passed in, in doing... Uh, uh, broadcast uh, radio. Uh, secondly, I, 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 I've done it in the past uh, for other people, but I don't particularly like substituting for somebody. Here's the reason why I don't like substituting for somebody. Why don't you like to substitute for somebody, Alex? Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, the reason is, and this, it's a very good reason, is it's not my show. And, and, and that's fine, but it's somebody else's show. So now I have to go in and do essentially somebody else's show. Uh, and, and he said to me, just do it the way you do it. Well, I don't know if I can do it the way I do it because his show is, it's a very light show. He doesn't get into heavy topics. He doesn't really talk about politics. Um, and so I'm not going to suddenly come on and start, uh, Trump is this and Trump is that, you know, and so on. It's, it, because that, that would not be doing his show. I'm being asked to do his show. Uh, and uh, so consequently, uh, I, I have the fear of going in and rearranging his furniture, you know, like he's lending me his house and now I'm going in and I'm repainting the walls, you know. And that's not the right thing to do. So I've got to do his show, kind of, at least adapted to me. So I've been, you know, finally I, I said, I just don't think I'm up for the task. And he said, I've heard you in that little room of yours uh, doing your, your show. He said, you're, you're more than up to it. You're, uh, you know, you're doing uh, great. Um, uh, you know, and, and you're as good as you've ever been. And this is from a guy who's a consultant. So he, he, char he charmed me into it. But now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. And I've, at first I thought it was a two-hour show, and it, it used to be a two-hour show for him. And now I find out it's three hours. And it goes from 10 o'clock at night to 1 o'clock in the morning, I think. Or maybe it's not. Maybe I have to check the times. I, I don't rem I've got to check it all out. Anyway. So he writes me this note, and he says to me, now I figure, you know, at least the, the positive part is I'm going to be doing 
going into a radio station again, right? And they're going to do it from the CBS uh, studios here in New York. I don't know where they are exactly. I think it's it's the one in Black Rock, which is their big CBS building. Um, and I'm going to do it from the CBS building. Uh, but he said uh, they the studio you're going to do it out of is to uh, put it nicely dingy. Well, hey, you know, I sit here every night with a microphone in front of me, and, you know, I don't know if this is dingy, but certainly I'm used to not having uh, a, a, a beautiful, you know, soundproof paneled studio. So uh, dingy didn't bother me, but here's the other part. Originally, he did his show out of Philadelphia, okay, and now he does his show, uh, believe it or not, out of his house in Cleveland. Uh, and he does it. He has the studio, his whole microphone, everything set up in his laundry room. I know. I, I, you know why he didn't put it in like some other room or something like that. But no, it's in the laundry room. I'm trying to imagine this guy next to a Kelvinator or something like that or a whirlpool doing his radio program. But he does it using a thing they call, um, um, I, I, there's a name for it, and I can't remember the name right now, but it's a box. And it, he hooks it in, and it goes to a telephone line, and the telephone line goes down to the station in Philadelphia where he has a phone screener and a board op. So he does nothing. He just talks into this microphone. They send him little notes, and he, uh, they tell him when he's got a call, he can see what calls he has coming up. And All I know is that he told me in this note, it's a dingy studio, and then you're going to go in there, and your producer is in Philadelphia. The phone screener is in Philadelphia. And the uh, board op is in Philadelphia. And I'm going, this is going to be one of the, you know, I've, this is all new in radio now. Nobody, nobody, I, actually, I wish we could have set it up so I could do it from here because I'm used to doing my show from here, okay? Um, but apparently I don't have that box he's got and whatever, so we can't do it that way. So Anyway. I, I just don't, I don't know what's going to happen. And so now I'm trying to get guests, so I'm going to try and get my ex-wife to come on and do an interview for about 15 minutes on the show. And I'm trying to get Bubbles, but he says he might not be available uh, as the only, the last man in America who hasn't got a, you know, uh, hasn't, has, still has dial-up, right? I'll do him for about 15 minutes and maybe do Durst for about 15 minutes. So, you know, going getting all my old friends to kind of join me. And they'll be on 50 different radio, radio stations around the United States, including San Francisco. So, uh, you know, I, um, um, but I just, I don't know, I'm just, it's got me all just really uptight. Now, I'm the kind of guy who used to feel, hey, you know something, just give me a fucking microphone and tell me, when it's on and I'll I'll do a show for you. Uh, and I just don't know if I'm up to that anymore. I just, you know, uh, I, I feel that when they dump me unceremoniously over at, uh, over at Sirius XM, that uh, I, I said to myself, that's the end of my career. You know, because at that point I was, what, 73? 73, was it? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, 73 years old um, and I said nobody's going to hire me I'm too old and I'm, I was right you know I, the calls haven't come rushing in from people and also in the time that I've been off the business has changed enough that this guy is doing a show from his laundry room right it used to be you know the wonderful thing I used to love about radio was I would I would uh, Say, huh, eh, gonna gotta do the show at two o'clock this morning. Like when I was in New York City, I was on at two in the morning. There was actually a shift for that. And I'd I'd then go down to the ABC studios and I'd go up to the uh, eighth floor of the ABC building 
and I would uh, walk into the studio, and there was my engineer, and there was my producer, who is now dead. Uh, and uh, I would then just I would do my show, and 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 you had that wonderful feeling of of you going in somewhere, and all of a sudden somebody's going to flip a button, and all of a sudden a whole bunch of people are going to hear you, right? And um, so I, um, uh, you know, I love that, but that doesn't exist anymore. And now I'm being told I'm going into a dingy studio. I can only imagine what's going to happen in this dingy studio. There's going to be a guy there who just uh, says, well, there's a flip for the switch for the mic, and you turn it on when you're going to talk. And then there'll be a guy talking in my ear, telling me, hey, we got 10 seconds until we're back to you again. And... Uh, you know, go to line three and whatever. And I'm not, I'm not used to, I o always hated this when a television was very difficult for me because when you do television, they put these things in your ear called IFBs. And they're, they're, they're really the two way uh, from, from either the producer or whatever. Like when I did, uh, um, when I used to do what's his name show over at MSNBC, I'm, He's over at Fox now. I can't even remember his name. Tucker Carlson. Uh, when I was, used to do Tucker Carlson's show, uh, uh, he was he was in New Jersey. I was in a studio or a what passed for a studio. It was a camera. It was a backdrop of New York City and me sitting there. And uh, I keep hearing these people in the IFB talking to me while I'm trying to talk. And I'm, I, I find that very difficult to do, you know. I don't like somebody talking into my earpiece when I'm trying to talk to you. Because I'm sitting here talking to you and all of a sudden somebody's going, we're going to go to a commercial in a couple of minutes and uh, uh, you have somebody on line seven. And, yeah, really. and so that whole part of it gets me. I'm just... I'm really, really frightened about this, and it's less than two weeks away. Um, but what I, you know, I I know what I'm going to do, in uh, to start off the program, and I know what direction I'm going to have the first hour go. Beyond that, I, it's three hours. Jeez, you know. But it isn't really three hours. Now you remember, here. Let me show you something. Wait a minute. I'll show you this. This is this is what you got to see. If you got, if you're watching this on the video, then you can see this. See that? Oh, you, by the way, you notice how everything gets darker because I've got white in the picture. See, see, huh? Yeah, I can't do anything about that either. I've been trying to figure out. But you see that? That's what you call a clock. Now you see all the all the gray stuff in there, huh? Well, first of all, most of the gray stuff are all commercial breaks, all right? And then at the uh, very top, yeah, well, that's it's gray at the top, too. See, it's gray here, and it's gray down in he over here, and it's gray down in here, see? And you add all those up, and all those gray spots amount to about, well, let me see here. First of all, let me see here. First is a six-minute break at the top of the hour because you got newscasts and local commercials and so on. So there's six minutes. And then there's another five-minute break. Okay, so that's 11 minutes. And then there's another five-minute break. That's uh, 16 minutes. And then there's another five-minute break. And that's um, 21 minutes. Let me see here. Let me get that again. 5, 10, 15, 21. 21 minutes. So what I got to fill is 31 minutes. No, 38 minutes. Something like that. Um, so it isn't like here where I'm having to fill up two hours a night. Okay? Just without commercials or anything. So in two hours, I will do about the equivalent of one show here. <sighs> Somehow it just all, bo all bothers me. It's all got me antsy and uh, um, just, you know, it, it, it's not, it, it's something if I didn't have to do it, I probably wouldn't do it. But he is like, he's not forcing me. He's just, 
terribly insistent that I can do it, you know. And I, and I don't want to disappoint him either, you know. Now, I wouldn't have been making, the, having this kind of fear, what, five years ago. Hell, I'd be taking the opportunity and saying, hey, maybe I can get a job out of this, you know. But, you know, at my age, nobody wants me. I have to be honest about that. And it's not because I can't do the job. Listen to me. I'm sitting here. I'm talking. I've been talking now for, what, 15 minutes or something like that? 16 minutes, right? Probably, hopefully, engaging you. So I have no problem doing that. But I still think I don't have it the way I used to have it. You know, so. Anyway, I, I really don't know what to tell you folks except that... Um, I, uh, 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 I, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it, you know, and I, but, but who knows, you know, I may have a great time and after it's over say, gee, I wish I could do that again. And maybe he'll ask me to do it again on some other occasion. I'll be happy to do it. But you know, it's, it's a very strange kind of situation. I don't even know where the studio is. He says the CBS studios. Now that could mean down on 57th street or that could mean in, in black rock. Or it could mean that it's a dingy closet in uh, some cheap hotel downtown. I have no idea. But I'll find out, won't I? Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. You know, it, it's, just, it's just not... Uh, it's not as easy as it used to be. Th doing this every night isn't as easy as it used to be for me. Um... The other night, in fact, I found it was getting kind of frustrating. Um, uh, we, we, we were doing a pretty, we, we had a pretty good show. But for the first hour or so, it was, it was, I was sitting here just, I was ready to throw my hands up, uh, you know, and uh, because there were some people dr trying to drag the show in certain directions and things like that, so... Uh, you know, it what didn't make it as pleasant as it normally is, okay? So, be that as it may, um, I'm, I'm sure tonight will be a great pleasant time if anybody decides to call, and we'll start doing that in a couple of minutes. Um, I want to tell you about a, a movie that I've, a TV show that I've seen. Uh, people are always asking me, see any good TV shows lately? See any good TV shows lately? And I tell them, well, uh, no. Or, I, oh, the new Better Call Saul is out. I, this, I still think it's kind of boring this year so far. But we'll wait and see where it goes. But uh, there's a thing on Netflix that I started watching. And I'll tell you something I did, which... Um, if you're a real film buff and a real TV buff, you don't do. But when you have Netflix, they have a lot of these shows that are from other countries. They're like in French, right? And then they have subtitles. But you can turn the subtitles off and you can turn on the English language dubbing. Now, normally I wouldn't do that, but this is a 16-episode series and it's in German. And to begin with, German is a very terse language. And by that I mean uh, they say a couple of words and it's a whole sentence. Right? So if you're trying to read subtitles, they go by too fast. And if you're spending time trying to absorb the subtitles uh, and not absorb the photography, the costumes, uh, and all of that, it's pretty difficult. So what I decided to do was turn off the subtitles, turn on the, uh, um, what do you call it? Turn on the uh, uh, dubbed voices and after about 10 minutes of kind of not liking dubbed voices okay uh i suddenly got used to it and i started to absorb the show and the show is called babylon berlin and it's done by tom uh tickver who is the was the guy who did remember run lola run one of my favorite films and this is the most expensive tv show ever produced for German television. It's done by Sky. And here in America, they say a Netflix original. And um, 
it takes about five episodes to get into it, but once you get into it, there we I got to episode 15 today. And episode 15 is one of the mo ten, most tense, um, uh, dramatic things I've ever seen on television. I mean, I was just seeing it, it was gut-wrenching. And I'm, I'm going, oh, ooh, 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 I wanted to avert my eyes at certain times. It was that good, okay? So what I'm suggesting you should do is you should go to Netflix, look up Babylon Berlin. It's there. It's very prominent. And then go turn off the, uh, the uh, subtitles and turn on the dubbed version and then just lie back and enjoy it. And one of the reasons you want the dubbed version is if you're spending all your time trying to read the subtitles, you're not taking in what is a very plush presentation visually. It's a, be a visually beautiful show. And uh, it's very hard to take that in when all the time you're trying to keep up with the subtitles, which are going by way too fast because German is a terse language. All right? So that's, that's, the, that's the big problem uh, with it. But if you can get through it. I'm, I'm waiting tonight when I get off here. Uh, I'm going to go watch the final episode. And it's been picked up for another full season of 16 episodes which they call two seasons. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch the last uh, episode tonight of this batch because it is, it is so good. I can't tell you how great it is. And it's got music by Brian Ferry. And uh, it, uh, it's, it's uh, how do I, I don't know how to describe it. It, it just, and it, it takes place in Berlin in 1929. This is during the Weimar Republic. This is right after the war. They're trying to establish their government again. This guy is a policeman, and it's all very corrupt. And it's just uh, really something to watch. Um, so do, do give it a shot if you get a chance. It's called Babylon Berlin. Okay? All right. Well, I think I mean, it's about a minute early, but I think I'll open up the Skype lines and see if anybody calls tonight. And as I say, if they don't, I'll just sign off early and go home. Go watch my last episode of Babylon Berlin. Um, also, I, I, I feel constantly like I have to go to the pee tonight. So I need enough people to talk to each other in case I have to run off and pee. But anyway, the lines are open, and I'm just going to wait here while people try to call. Uh, Anything, any items here? Oh, I got a, I got a picture I'll show you while I'm waiting. Oh, well, Phil's calling. Okay, I'll show it to you later. Uh, yeah, here, here comes, here comes, here comes Phil. Let me see here. Let me, uh, pim, pim, pim. let me push the button here and then you can see him. There he is. Hey, hey Phil. Hey, there he uh, is with his NRA hat to piss me off. If you do what it is you fear, the fear will go away. That's Longfellow's quote, uh, based on what you were talking about with your Westwood One deal. What is that stupid saying again? If you do what it is you fear, the fear will go away. Well, I, of course, the fear will go away. I know that I will go in and I will be able to do the show. It's just that I don't know if I can do it to my satisfaction. Okay? Uh you know, if you haven't done it in five years, it may not be to your satisfaction. It's like somebody that was a, a tennis great. You know, if they don't play for five years, do you think that your first game out of the shoot is going to be... Well, do you, uh, but, but I've been doing this for five years, every night. Yeah, so you may find that it's much easier than you thought. Could be. I don't have the to. whole reason you've been doing this is to keep your chops up. Yeah, yeah. So now you'll see whether that has paid off. And if it hasn't, just tell us all to go fuck ourselves, and uh, you know we'll we'll go watch Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Quit the business once and for all. You know. But you know you'll find out whether this exercise and basically what you're doing is like going to the gym. Uh, as a shooter, a shooter. I dry hate fire. going to the gym. By the way, <laughs> let me tell you that yeah. right now. I hate it. You hate everything. No, today uh, I was sitting there pedaling. And going, yeah. this is a fucking waste of my time. 
I could be at home. I could be lying down. I could be seeing another episode of Babylon Berlin. You know, mm-hmm. I could be doing a lot of things. I'd go home, watch some porn, jerk off, right? I do. What am I? And I get a lot of work on my right hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. If yeah, if you do it, it, it will come. <laughs> if, if, you, if you if you play with it, they will uh, it will come. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're joined uh, hopefully here by Scott Boddicker. There he is. Hello, Scott. How are you, my friend? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So we got enough people here to do a great show. <laughs> what? What do you mean? I don't hot? say anything. Huh? I don't say anything though. Hey, well, you do. You know when you say stuff, if nobody else is here, you talk up a fucking storm. I'm just trying to. Yeah. Listen to the crowd. Yeah. Uh, but but you're our you know you're, this is the Hollywood Squares and you're our. I, I just don't want you to get frustrated and hang up, you know. So I just call in. Early. Oh, I see. They, well, there's there's Ray Renati. He's not even out Hello. walking the dog tonight. No, not yet. Not yet. No. <laughs> yeah, it's early. It's you know, early. It, it actually hurt my neck holding the camera when I'm walking. Yeah. And, Do you and, have a sh- and I couldn't get out of bed on Sunday because my neck was all sore from holding that damn thing. Yeah. Do you have a selfie stick that can hold? I the had camera? one, but it broke. Uh, is somebody in your house using your bandwidth? Why is something wrong right well, now? It, it, well, you were like oh, a yes. little, little stuttering. Yes. Yeah. Me. I was watching you on Chromecast. Let me go turn it off. Let me turn that off, and I think you'll be a lot smoother. Yeah. Yeah. Jerky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, sounds good. No, he's he's got to go to the other room. Yeah. I say. What's Chromecast? Is that that stick-in thing they've got? I think so. Chrome? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's like all the other ones, but uh, that's the uh, Google. There's a Roku it. stick. They yeah. they have an Echo stick now. I think they have a that does TV. Uh, uh, Google has uh, yeah the Chrome Chrome stick. Uh, they, yeah, they got a yeah. sharp stick in the eye. Yeah, not, you're still kind of stuttering a bit, stuttering a little I bit. I am? Well, it's, okay. it's smoother. It's getting smoother now. Let me close a bunch of junk here. Yeah, okay. yeah. But sometimes, what happens is sometimes people call this program and, and they're freezing up and stuff like that. And they go, what's wrong there? And they go, oh, uh, 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 what's his name says this all Kevin. Time. Kevin says this all the time. Oh, my kid's playing a video game. Yeah. yeah, and there used to be that uh, guy from, uh, uh, he was a tech guy, uh, used to call in from, uh, like, Nebraska, one of those areas. Yeah. He he lived in San Francisco. He moved to uh, the middle of nowhere, and, and uh, he bought some mansion in a, in a, in a, in a burned-out area. Oh, and, uh, the guy from uh, Kansas City. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so anyway, that guy always had problems with his kids uh, watching something, and yeah. uh, his bandwidth would be really minimal, minimized. Yeah. Is my, is my better now? Yes, it is. No. Okay. I'll tell you what you do. Hang up and then call right back. Yeah, because it's already screwed up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just wait a second. He'll be back with us. But it was, it was better. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, let me. Uh, I, I want to make note of this only because I think it's important. Is that Phil is going to go have his little procedure on Thursday? Thursday. Is it? Yeah. Now, what is it uh, exactly? It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a hysterectomy, um, isn't it? Oh, I see an angioplasty. <laughs> what they do is stick a balloon up my ass, and they send it all the way up to the heart. <laughs> and, uh, uh, how do they do that? By the way, uh, they uh, this this procedure is a little bit more uh, complicated than the first one I had. Mm-hmm. Normally, what they do is they go into an artery. Uh, yeah. The last time they did it, the artery was uh, right in my wrist, yeah, and uh, left no larger uh, opening than what you get with a bee bite. Uh, and then they uh, it. They put up a, the thing that has a stent as well as a camera as well as dye. And they're yeah. able to inject that dye, uh, see where the blockage is, and then they, they can push a balloon out that opens up the artery. And they rotor-rooter out the, uh, the crap, and they stick a stent in there, uh, which is like a little piece of mesh, like a straw. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, holds the artery open. 
uh, increasing the blood flow. Well, the one I'm having them uh, on Thursday is a little more complicated because uh, they don't know where the blockage stops. So this one, they're going to go in with one uh, probe through my femoral artery, which I think is in the groin, mm -hmm. and then the other one will pro possibly go through the wrist. And one of them has the camera and the die, and the other one is the working one, which has all the stents. And this is what they call a staged stent procedure. So they'll mm -hmm. rotor rooter put in a stent. If there's still blockage, they'll continue to rotor rooter put in another stent, and they'll keep stenting until they get to Fresno. I see. By the way, Keenan's joined us. Keenan, where are you? Are you still in Thailand? I'm, I'm back in Oakland. Back in Oakland. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is this a uh, Thailand guy? Yeah. Turn on your camera. Oh. Hey. Okay. Uh, Hold Keenan. on. Yeah. There I'm we here. are. Hey, we really enjoyed that, by the way, all that Thailand stuff. Yeah. Oh, it was fun, yeah. actually, to show you that. We're asking yeah. Phil about his procedure on Thursday. So how yeah. dangerous is this procedure, Phil? I mean, are you having to make out a will? And if you have, am I, I in I it? Sh I, I should have, and I didn't. Uh, uh, you know, there's a couple of things I, I haven't done. I wanted to write a letter to each of my kids, and I just, I've been so slammed, I haven't done that either. Uh, well, you then, know, you can't di then you can't die, okay? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Uh, my, what they say about this procedure die. is uh, that uh, it's rare that, uh, death occurs during this procedure. You, you can, you know, free up something that gives you a stroke or something like that. So I might come back and I'll be the new Steve, you know. <laughs> You'll be the new <laughs> Steve. <laughs> so that's Poor the problem Steve. with Steve. I wondered what the problem with Steve was. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but, well, uh, was... <laughs> you know, I worry about you, Phil. You know, I mean, I, I, I give you, a, we give each other a bad time on this program and I, yell at you and you yell at me and so on but i you know i think the world of you and i worry about you and i worry uh, I you know i want to make sure that you're just fine hey you're a good guy i wouldn't have stuck in here to help you do your show and keep your chops up and and be your arch enemy if i didn't like you yeah well <laughs> we 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 all wish you uh you know uh, how fast do they say no. you're going to recover from this yeah. is it a pretty fast recovery uh, yeah, I'm hope uh, they keep you overnight, and I'm, uh, I'll be home over the weekend, and I think that I'll go back to work on Monday, unless they find that they can't, uh, uh, that I have a blockage at a uh, at a turn, and that there's another artery off of that turn, then they can't stint it, then I'll have to crack me open and do a bypass. Oh God! So you don't know till you wake up if you got a zipper or not, right? Yeah, although the uh, I just I have a friend that just had a triple bypass and her um, a scar was a pencil thin line four inches long. Really, they've gotten that good at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, at least her doctor did. Yeah, you know, mine's going to use a hacksaw. Yeah, <laughs> Kaiser. I go well, to Kaiser. Yeah. Well, they they have done they have done. Uh, uh, taking pictures of that area and so on do they think that that's a possibility or do they think that that's just an outside possibility they can't see past the blockage oh. so uh once once they start going into it uh and uh get into the blockage then they'll know uh, uh it'll be a surprise so you'll wake up and well as soon as you're able to i want to i want to hear from you you know no, i'll call you because I, you know, I, 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 I would, uh, life would not be the same without you, Phil. Let me just say Well, that. thank you. you know, my friends uh, did a Last Supper for me last night. And, oh, uh, 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 <laughs> what uh, great friends. friends. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the guy, Tommy Lafferty, he, he's been a real fan of yours for a long time. But, yeah. you know, uh, I'm, I'm watching. He's got a YouTube of him when he played at Wembley Stadium in front of 110,000 people. And he's saying, oh, Alex Bennett, you know, really, I just talked to Alex Bennett. And, you know, he opened. Oh, that, that your friend must have absolutely no life. I mean, if, you know. <laughs> he's, he's, he's cool. I just talked to Alex Bennett. Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So you made yeah. his night. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just sad you didn't make a will because, you know, then how am I going to get anything of yours? So. Well, I, I'm sending you to that thing. I, hopefully I'll have time to do it tomorrow. Uh, you know, the, so you'll have a new uh, or uh, uh, 
Yeah. Behringer. Yeah, well, that, that's fine. You know, but if, uh, you know, um, tell Faye that if, if you go uh, to send me the Mac Pro, okay? <laughs> okay? Okay. Yeah. Just tell her to do that. It's not, yeah, it's it's, it's pretty cool. It's not that I want to benefit from your death, but what the fuck? You're, what? You know, uh, yeah. You're, hey, you're, you know when my father died, somebody somebody came to the house. I was 17 years old. Guy comes to the house and he says, "You know, your father passed away. Do you still think that you guys need that snowblower?" <laughs> 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 oh boy. Yeah. Um, that's great. We lived in New York. You know. What did he die of? Uh, he had uh, a bypass, mm -hmm. and he was one of the first 100 to ever have oh, a yeah, bypass. Oh, yeah, you told me that, yes. And yes. Uh, he got blood clots about 10 days after the operation because they didn't really yeah. know about that stuff. Now they don't have it. it, it now it's like, uh, you know, yeah, zip, it's like getting your tonsils out. People call them zipper jobs. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, my friend last night, he says, uh, you know, you, you're going to be okay? And I said, yeah, they give you uh, Jello in the hospital, and I like it. <laughs> no. Oh, I hated I hated the food in the in the hospital. Well, I liked the Jello. You know, and it was, and they would bring me this stuff, and it was it was okay. I mean, it was just, but it was, you know, wasn't much fun. And I was in the what was the ward I was in? I was in the uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, where you go to die? You go uh, to palliative die. Care. Palliative care. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see. See what you get when you're on medical. Well, I had just a kidney stone, right? And now yeah. I find myself being put in this room with a big TV set and everything, and and as they're as they're wheeling me in, um, there's a sign that says palliative care. Yeah. And so when the doctor finally came, I said, "Palliative care? Is there something you're not telling me?" <laughs> and they said, "No. This was the only room available." And so you yeah. you got lucky. Yeah. You know, because at palliative care, you simply push that button slightly and they're there with more morphine than you ever knew what to do with. Yeah, but, you know, you know how come uh, if you're, you're in a spot like that, who gets to control the, the TV uh, remote? You oh. know, if there's six guys oh, in no, the room no, 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 no. and they're all dying. Everybody had their own fairly decent sized TV set. This is palliative care. This is where you go to die. Okay, wow. you know. Well, and I, I can only. I, and, and in the middle of the night, I'm <laughs> I'm lying there, and I've got I've got my own pain, but it's just a kidney stone, right? That I'm passing, and there's a guy yeah. over in the next thing yelling and screaming, "I'm in pain! I'm dying!" And people are coming by to see the other people and coming out, leaving, crying, you know. And I'm going, he, "What the fuck had, am I doing in had, palliative care?" Alex, that other guy that was crying had the bronze plan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You see, because you had the good plan, uh, you got all the good drugs. I, I him, see. they gave him a hammer. Well, the one thing I said, learned, and by the way, if there's any pain associated with this and they have to give you anything like morphine or whatever, when they say, oh, what is I your pain ask. level, say 10. 10. Never say 7, never say 8, never say 9, 10. Because yeah. one time I said, eh, it's like a, it's like a six, and they gave me the stuff, and I went, come on, this isn't even working, yeah. you know. Well, then, I, so I after played, that, I, I would say ten, one. and next thing I know, I'm off to La La Land, man. That when I, stuff when was I got the great. Last, when I got the last stent, uh, I did that, you know, but they were on to me. <laughs> the last stent? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did yeah, they give they you? Did they give you a morphine or something? Or some uh, they they thing? gave me something, but it, I don't think it was as powerful as morphine. Oh, morphine. Right. Oh, okay. Well, mine was Dalad, but da, da, Daladin. 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 I've got Daladin. It sounds like a Jerry own. Lewis drug. Daladin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've got some. I might. Daladin. Yeah, I might bring my own. Yeah. You know. Hey, I don't. I don't need yours. I got my own. No, <laughs> mine was no. They gave me Bin Laden. Yeah. Osama yeah. yeah. Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Yeah. So anyway, so Keenan, uh, how, uh, how long have you been back now? Um, about a week, a little over a week. Last yeah. week I was going to call in, but during this time I was like falling asleep. <laughs> oh, you were. Uh, uh, there was a thing on uh, on uh, the CBS Sunday Morning Show. Uh, uh, ben Stein does commentaries for him, and he's usually a right winger or whatever. But he was saying that he had advice for Donald Trump, and it was about jet lag. That there is no way to avoid jet lag. 
No matter what you do, if you sleep on the whole flight, you're still going to wake up and have jet lag. Yeah. Uh, and that it's, it's a fact of life. And that when we take somebody like a president and we send him to a foreign country and then he's got to have meetings deciding the fate of the free world, you, you know, he's, he's woozy. He's not ready for that. And what his suggestion was, you land Air Force One, you pull it off the tarmac, and then you stay in the plane for two days sleeping. And then you get out and do your business. Which, yeah, president, think... which president used to say that, they, that he uh, would um, sort of black out what was going on and he would stay to the LBJ. hours? It was LBJ, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going uh, Yeah. Yeah. That he would well, what? I think they should put him back on the plane. Yeah, he, would, he wouldn't. He wouldn't change his hours, so all the meetings had to be scheduled uh, for U.S. time, East Coast time. Oh, I see. In as other if, words, yeah, as if it were, he, it was still his well, time. Well, what what right. Stein said, and he was right. He said the trouble is all these presidents try to be so macho, and then they showed pictures of all them getting off the of planes in foreign countries and shaking hands with the world leaders, and they try to pretend he says like they're really awake when they're not. That's you know. why our president didn't even hold hands with his wife. That's right. Well, he we tried. There was another reason. <laughs> she kept pushing it away. He's holding the rail because it's a phase of By the way, you, you, don't, you don't have to hold that up. We can hear okay. you just fine. Hear you okay. just fine. So, Keenan, so, so what you had was jet lag, obviously. Yeah, a little bit. It wasn't as bad this time around for some reason. I went, when I went to China, I didn't have jet lag there. But when I came... Wasn't it a full 24 hours? No, it's 12 yeah. hours. Exactly. Oh. Flat. 12 hours. And uh, I didn't have a problem when I went there. Uh, a couple of extra naps here and there, you know. When I came back, I had to go to work the next Monday, and I'm going, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> I, I mean, know why. You know, when I go to... I, I used to go to Hawaii a lot. Uh, to go scuba diving, and uh, when I would leave here, it was eight in the morning. But when I get there, it would be ten in the morning their time, and so I had the whole day, and I was refreshed, even though it was a five-hour flight. Yeah. Uh, and uh, coming back, I would leave at two in the afternoon. I'd get here seven o'clock, my time, and uh, I, I'd be exhausted. Uh, so I think coming going east is harder than going west because you pick up time going west yeah yeah but anyway yeah, so I going mean, to europe is tougher than going to san francisco well let's see here uh it takes longer takes longer going west doesn't it than it takes going east uh and, well you you lose time because no no no, no. Uh, i'm talking about in actual because of headwinds and everything else yeah it's well, like that's a, that's between a, here in California, it's like about maybe six plus hours coming and about eight hours going back. That's a possibility. Yeah. 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 It, it depends on the route that they take. So but uh, yeah, that 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 isn't as uh, difficult as the time change going east. You know, so the the force of the wind against the plane, yes, can make it take a little bit longer depending on the direction. But it's your uh, your sleep cycle uh, when you're thrown into uh, going east mm -hmm. uh, is more difficult, and that's when you get the. I, I got to tell you, I I am so old now that I get jet lag just going down to Twenty Third Street. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much going to Twenty Third Street, coming back from Twenty Third Street. It's east. Is it east it, to it, your it, apartment? No, it, it's south. Oh, well, then that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> well, let's see. Wait a minute. Now, if we're talking about jet lag, let's say I started here when I went to the South Pole, right? Yeah. Would I get jet lag? Probably. Well, not if you believe the Earth is flat. You know something? I wouldn't. You wouldn't get jet lag. You know why? <laughs> because the time would be the same. If I go due south, the time would be the same. If I went due west the time would change. But isn't it light for six months of the year and dark for six months of the year? Yeah, it changed seasons. <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, like if you go to the North Pole it, uh, or Sweden or any of those kinds of places that yeah. are that, that high and uh, uh, you, you experience, uh, even Alaska, you, you experience light for like six months and there I've isn't often, any I've, night. I've often wanted to go to the South Pole. 
right yeah. to the South Pole, the actual epicenter South Pole. People they die have a good doing restaurant that. there. Well, wait a minute, and stand there on uh, on the South Pole. Now let me ask you a question. When I move out of the South Pole, what direction am I going to be going? Depends if you go up, back, or yeah. If I go up, back, yeah. or I go <laughs> forward, or I go sideways, from the actual epicenter, North Pole, I'm dead on. South Pole. The only place I can go is north. North. No matter what direction I go, I'm going north. As soon as I move right. out of yeah, that epicenter, I can then move north, south, east, and west. Wow, you could have won Ben Stein's money. Yeah. And <laughs> I've, often, won, I've often wanted to do that. Yeah. sounded like a lot of fun to me. Yeah, but it's a little cold. Yeah. But they're, it's so cold, but, you wouldn't know whether you're going north or south or east or west. Well, believe it or not, they actually they have a base at the South Pole. I don't think they have one at the North Pole. North Pole's pretty hard to get to. The South Pole, they do have a base, and I've actually seen video of them where they shot the sun straight up from the, north, from the South Pole. And it just sits there in the sky, kind of just going, just wiggling slightly. And that's it. Oh, 24 was hours a, a day. Lapse? Yeah. Was it time lapse? Yeah, it's time lapse. There's like huh. a little town down there near the South Pole. Yeah, it's called People Santa's Village. There. No, what? <laughs> Don't they have an ATM and a whole bunch of other stuff there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. people live there. But here, here was the problem. Do you remember that woman who got, uh, she had, she had. Oh, she was a had, doctor she had and she cancer. had cancer. Uh, or something like that, she, and they couldn't get to her for yeah. three or four months. Yeah, because the planes can't go out in and out for several uh, months. Uh, well, that sucks. That's why I'm not going to live there. Well, they were almost going to try and operate on her there, but they couldn't. They got her out in time, and they saved her life. I think she's still alive, I yeah. assume. You know, mm. just my my thinking on it. Okay, uh, but anyway, so. Um, so you, 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 but you're over your jet lag now, right, Keenan? Yeah, I'm pretty much back to normal. Uh -huh. I, surprisingly, I went to work the next day when I got back. Yeah. But uh, what do you was, do? What do you do? I work at workers' comp. Oh, you, for, you were uh, telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. yep. And uh, your your wife uh, came back with you, or did she stay with the relatives for a no, while? No, they came back with me. <laughs> oh, all the relatives came back with you? No, just my just my family. Oh, oh just your family. Oh. Chain migration. I, That's yeah. what Trump called tra chain migration. By the way, <laughs> did you see this about Trump's family? You know, chain yeah. migration is when uh, somebody comes over, becomes a citizen. And then they bring their relatives with them, and they simply hang around for a while, or then become citizens. And it's called chain migration, something that Trump has yelled and screamed about. Well, mm -hmm. Melania's parents the other day became American citizens through that very process. Yeah. yeah they said that they applied uh, the normal way that everyone else does. I know, but it's still chain migration. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I wait a minute! Uh, you just passed. Someone... You just you just passed over that, Phil. <laughs> I'm I'm living with someone that's a product of that. My uh, my fiance is from the Philippines. By the way, his fiance she, she's been his fiance forever. It's very safe. You give the ring, they leave you alone. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, she's got a good Catholic family. Fifteen brothers and sisters. I don't know how the mother did it, right? She, I don't know how she walks. But uh, the father, the mother, and all 15, including Faye, uh, came here because her brother was in the military in the Philippines and became a U.S. citizen and was able to bring all of them here. And so that was chain migration. Yeah, exactly. So you're getting, blo uh, you're go getting blown courtesy of chain migration. Chain migration, right. I see. <laughs> But, uh, hey, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong in bringing, uh, you know, families here, especially if they're uh, productive members yes, of society. Yes, but your hero, her sister, but her your sister hero, is your hero, dentist. your hero does. Yeah, he, well, he, he railed know. against chain migration. Every speech he gave it was chain migration this, chain migration that. And then his, his wife's parents come over and they become citizens as a result of chain migration. You know, isn't that a um, 
uh, what would you call that? A uh, I call uh, it hypocr- a real kick in the pants, huh? <laughs> yeah, I call that hypocrisy. Dean Martin. Yeah. Plus, that plus here, here's, the, here's the stupidity of his version of chain migration. Then when you're through, you got your in-laws living with you. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You think they hold his hand? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Getting off the plane, though. Yeah. So hey, anyway. he's sleeping with their daughter, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. so, actually. Well, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think there's anything going on there right talk, now. Well, t- talking about people sleeping with kids, yeah. uh, what's going on with the uh, church? I guess uh, the Catholic Church has just uh, kind of uh, released some documents uh, that were... This was in, uh, this archives. is in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. And something like, what, how many? 300. 300. Well, there was 300 uh, priests... Uh, over a seventy-year period, 70 years. and I and I think there was seventeen thousand uh, priests total over that period, and then three hundred of them uh, are uh, known pedophiles. That, that meets the normal uh, demographics of the U.S. population for pedophiles, especially in Philadelphia. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, you know what I always felt, what contributed the most. By the way, we're losing audience for some reason. Now, let me see. How can I bring it up? Uh, fuck you, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I like? Uh, what I like about this is they're talking about extending or giving special statutes to the. Uh, 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 what is it that um, uh, when you can't be prosecuted after a certain period of time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Statute of limitations. Statute of limitations. So they've opened it up. There's one that they opened up that uh, could be um, six months. Another one that they uh, gave like a three-year period. So what they're doing is for these uh, certain kinds of crimes, uh, for people to really get their uh, get justice, uh, they're opening up the statute of limitations, and they're not allowing people to skirt by. Uh, and and use that as an excuse. In, in what particular cases? Uh, in these priest cases and. Uh, but in, they they, um, they you some, can't you can't stop. No, uh, there was there was a couple. Uh, I just heard it on. No, CBS there were a couple Post. that fell within the window. No, no, no. There was a. They were talking about a special thing where they were able to open the statute of limitations. No, they were thinking of trying to pass a law. Oh. To change the, uh, the statute of limitations because, it, and by the way, Keenan, I was my picture was right in your face, so I now have adjusted <laughs> it so that people can see Keenan. Um, uh, 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 what were we saying? It was about the, um, statute, uh, of the statute of limitations. I think what I heard was that there was a statute of limitations. Of course, it holds because it was law at the time that these crimes were committed. But what they're thinking of doing is changing the statute of limitations. Yeah, you know, there's a statute. Yeah, the statute of limitations on everything, and they're thinking of where pedophilia is concerned, yeah. having no statute of limitations. Well, I guess with murder, there's no statute of limitations. Oh uh, no, there is murder. There, well, the murder, there's no statute of limitations. Right, right. And I don't yeah. know about kidnapping. Uh, I, I think there is. Yeah. A, a statute. I, I, I think there's one or two other things that there's no statute of limitations, but murder is one of them. I often wonder why, what was the purpose of a statute of limitations? Makes no it sense. goes back to common law that every seven years uh, you got a clean break. Um, it, it, was, it was something to do with common law. I, I don't know, the, the kings made this stuff up. No, but it seems to me if, if you, you know, robbed a bank and stole the money... Uh, in 1950, and now they found out that you were the guy that did it in 19 in the year 2000 or something. It still should hold, but it doesn't. I mean, yeah. uh, who was that guy that supposedly jumped out of the plane and they never found him again? Uh, oh, yeah. Cooper. Uh, D.B. No, Cooper. Yeah. Right. D.B. Yeah. Cooper. 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 Yeah. I wonder. Did it just come up in the news uh, a month or so ago? Oh, I don't know. Every now and then they think they found well, out maybe who, it was a TV show who D.B. Uh, Cooper they, was yeah. or where he wound up or if he was alive. Quite frankly, I think he got impaled by a pine tree, but, you know. Yeah. Who knows if he ever really jumped? 
What do you mean? What do you think he did? He stayed on the plane and disguised himself? <laughs> uh, no, you know, uh, can you get into, like, um, the wheel well or any of those kinds of things in the plane? Uh, not, you know, without, he, but not without freezing to death in most cases. Yeah. There have been people yeah. who have actually hit in wheel wells when a plane took off, and they pretty uh, well found them after the plane landed, but frozen. You know. There was some crazy lady that uh, in the San Jose airport that used to keep getting on planes without a ticket, and I think that's how she did it and might have lived. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, how about yeah. this no, story? She actually boarded the plane. She Oh, she boarded the plane? Yeah, but I think they caught her in Europe or something like that. They've caught her a ton of times. <laughs> no, but I think doing... they actually have her in jail or something uh, in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my question is, my, my question is, how about this guy... Uh, who stole the plane a uh, couple of days ago. Yeah. He's not good at landing. No, you're definitely not good at landing. But my he ran out of gas, I believe. It, Is that he, what he, that's like, what happened. He, he ran out of gas. Crashing it. He said he was going to take the nose down after he was oh. done doing his barrel roll. Well, it, it, he I was think, going upside down. I don't think he wanted to kill himself. They, they, yeah. they say he seemed to act like he wanted to live. You know, but oh. how this guy, just like you and I, okay, suddenly, number one, he could get behind the wheel of a plane. I understand that, okay? He was uh, working for the airline. Right. But then he they gets... They said he had no connection uh, with what he was doing and the ability to drive a plane. Right. Yeah. A and then he taxis down the runway and, and they clear him for takeoff. And he seems to know how to get that plane off the ground. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't know how to. And he mentioned something in the two-way conversations with the ground that this is just like the video games I play. Right, I, right. I looked yeah. it up, Alex. Flight simulator. Uh, yeah. I looked up the flight simulator for that plane, yeah. and there are very, very detailed yeah. flight simulators all over the place for that particular plane. It tells you every step on how to take that thing off wow. in detail. Every single button you have to push, why you have to push it, how you take it off, what you have to do in preparation. Wow. Yeah. And I could see him, he's, you know, learning it right there on his computer. Wow. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Hey, is anybody else going to call tonight? Come on. Join the fun. I think they. I heard he, they said he learned how to do it on YouTube. Also, maybe some pilot instructor, you know, showed him out well, on YouTube. There That's are right. there are flight simulation games, and then people put videos on YouTube oh. showing how to use it. Oh, okay. And I, that's what I watch, and it's super okay. realistic looking. The only flight simulator. Ah, here comes Patrick. The only flight simulator I ever owned was for uh, operating a uh, the the. Um, shuttle a space shuttle a space shuttle and um guess which one it was challenger challenger <laughs> yeah i had it was a microsoft a macintosh game a yeah. simulator for the challenger it was which funny one? it was funny because when you played it it always had the same end it, 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 the result was always the same you could never succeed in flying the damn thing you know? <laughs> But when I was selling all my stuff to move out to New York, I tried to get rid of it, and I figured there'd be a market for it, that I've got the, the, the Challenger game. Of and sick video-playing people that would sick, want to... Yeah, sick that. video game people who, who want to... Yeah, sure. Hey, look who's here. Yeah, uh, yeah, lucky ass. Uh, hello, hello, Patrick. Hello. How are you doing, my boy? I am just doing as well, if you can be. Wow. Yeah. Uh, your microphone was better the other night for some yeah. reason. It was the best it's ever been. What did you do then? Anything? No, I haven't done anything. Yet. Oh, now it's fine. No, uh, yeah. He, he paid his Skype bill. He paid yeah. his Skype bill. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you know, Skype isn't going to be changing programs. Uh, it, they heard you. It, it, it isn't going to be changing programs for the time being. So I don't have to worry about on September 1st giving up this program or the way in which we do it in this lovely group of people as you see them here 
because with the new one you can only have four people up at one time uh, but um, uh, they, they decided not to do it uh, because they had so many complaints from people and uh, yeah. so you know if, if enough people complain I guess they would do something about it well I'd like to know how those people were able to complain yeah, well, here's yeah. the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. I have this program, right? I have the, the, the old Skype classic. And fine. Yeah. Okay, now you've decided you're not going to go to the new one. Why does it still have the sign-up saying that you have to absolutely go to the new one? And why is it every now and then a thing comes up on my screen and says, would you like to update now? Yeah. You, you know, Mine does that, too. Yeah, stop that already. You told us Mine you were doesn't. not going to have to. Huh? Mine doesn't do no, that. No, because you know why? It doesn't do it on the Mac. It does it only on the PC. Yeah. You know. Microsoft hasn't mastered the Mac yet. Yeah. And how to be hey, totally in uh, I, I watched a special the other day. Uh, Patrick might be interested in this. It's an exoskeleton that they developed for uh, quadru uh, quadru not quadriplegic, par paraplegics. And uh, there was this one guy. Uh, that was on CBS the Sunday morning. Yeah, that, okay. It was very interesting. Did you see it, Patrick? No. Uh, it was amazing technology. Yeah, I, I had one made. It was, it was up manual, though. And it yeah. was too much to get in and out of it. Uh, yeah, this uh, this was uh, all electronic. and uh, it seemed, it was, The, it was the things they were showing, though, seemed to be a little bit cumbersome. You uh, know, they were like yeah, these big, I, giant... What is it, like braces? No, they're, of. They're, they're, but no, they're not like braces. They're, they're literally something that goes along the side of your each leg, and then it's yeah. hooked to a backpack. I mean, yeah, they call it an exoskeleton. You know, when they say, "Hey, we've got this new development. This is wonderful." Yeah, but is it practical for the person? If I want to see Patrick walking, I want to see him doing it as effortlessly as possible. Otherwise, he's probably happy with his wheelchair, right, Patrick? Well, yeah, but you got to look at it this way. It, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. You might uh, say that. No. <laughs> Man, Bada boom. I, I would be the one that would want to be testing it because, it, it, like I said, I had a manual one that I had to put on, and then I was using crutches or a, uh, a uh, walker, and it's just too much BS. Right. But if there's people out there willing to do it, uh, it'll just keep getting refined, which would be good. Didn't the guy, Alex, who was using that one on TV uh, have crutches? One, one of them had crutches, was using crutches yeah. as an aid. Yeah. But that he was, it, what he was, what made him happy was he was able to walk upright, you know, yeah. that he hadn't been upright in years, you know. But I, let me, let me, let me, I, let me throw this out to Patrick. You know, I, when I, years ago, when I interviewed, uh, Stevie Wonder, uh, we talked about his blindness. And I said, uh, can anything ever be done about your blindness? He said, people have come to me with possibilities that they could make me sighted. Because I think he was sighted when he was born and he lost his vision very early on, like at two, two years or something like that. Yeah. And I said, so why haven't you tried it? And he said, I've gone this long without seeing. I'm getting along just fine. I don't, if, if all of a sudden I could see, it would change the whole, my whole life and the way I do things. You know? He said, I don't know if I <clears throat> want to see now. now if yeah, I, as, a, as, a, as a half blind or whatever person, I've had blind people say the same thing. Now, if, I, if they could do something... For me, which right now they can't, I'm going to check again before the year is up and see. Mm -hmm. You never know with the technology. But if they could give me uh, perfect eyesight, I would certainly at least consider it because I know what it's like. Yeah, but you, but you, you, you were, you were originally you were sighted, right? And you lost your vision. No, no, no. I've had about the same. It, it was cataracts and what happened well, no, was, no, no, wait a minute. I'm talking about... Did you have cataracts as a kid? Uh, they, yeah, it was, uh, it was the incubator. It was the oxygen oh, and the light. Too. 
Oh, so you've been so you've been kind of uh, di- uh, not not blind, sight but impaired. sight impaired for most of your life. Oh yeah, for all as long as I can remember. Absolutely, it was discovered when I was nine months old. Yeah, so you can so. you can you can get along fine oh, yeah. without suddenly having to see. If tomorrow, well, you see, imagine somebody who's totally blind. And then all I of a can't sudden, even imagine it. If I cover it, my eyes, yeah. I can't. I just can't. I. It's a such a different world than what I have. I'm so right. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, if you were totally blind, I don't know if they suddenly being sighted, it would make your life better. It might make it more confusing, wouldn't it? I would think maybe it would. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I think it might. You know, By the so, way, is Aretha Franklin still alive? Is so far well, as we know, she yeah, she's still alive. Yeah, oh. I, I, I think, I think there's all the, all the things. What are they going to do when she dies? It will play music. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. But you know, here's the point. What are they going to do when she dies? They've been spending the last two days saying she's on death's door, at death's door, right? She's going to yeah. die at any moment, right? When she finally dies, it's not going to be like. Let's do all the tributes. They're already doing the tributes. When, Prin- when Prince yeah, died, it was true. kind of a uh, quick thing, and so they played his music to death for a week or two after he passed away. But you're right. With Aretha Franklin, they're doing the tributes to her now yeah. while she's mm-hmm. on death's door. Yeah, and, so when uh, she finally drops dead, everybody, what's everybody going to do? Let's, let's do it again? You know. Yeah, no. Trump will say something on Twitter. And he'll, say something. he'll probably call her dumb because she's black. He'll probably say she's too lazy. <laughs> he'll, he'll use the N word. Yeah. By the way, my friend Penn Gillette today came out and said that when he did The Apprentice, he heard uh, Donald Trump saying that word like crazy. He said Whoa. so much so that it made him uncomfortable. And right. and you and you. What? And you too. The N word. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about it, the whole flap over his? Uh, you know, as long as the N word, not the Jew word, I'm, what, I'm okay. What kills me is I'm watching <laughs> MSNBC, right? And they're yelling and screaming about, yeah, yeah Almarosa wow. has, uh, has heard this tape that was done when he was doing The Apprentice and blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah. the window. You know, and you go, I, 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 are you sitting here saying MSNBC, you wish you could lay your hands on it? You were the fucking network that put that show on the air in the first place. Somebody at NBC should have the rights to all the outtakes. The, the tape that uh, Amoroso uh, quoted that she had heard from someone else who heard the tape was supposedly this guy, Frank Lutz. Now, Frank Lutz, Lutz was... Lutz, Lutz, Lutz. Yeah, he's a, uh, a semi-independent uh, pollster. Yes. Uh, and um, uh, I, I'm not sure whether he leans to the right or the left. Probably a little bit to the right, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, now, he, leans he, said, he leans very much to the right. And he's the guy who used to come up with terms that the Republican Party would use for things. Like when you suddenly would hear a, a, a phrase come into popularity, all of a sudden every Republican was using the same phraseology. That's because Luntz would put out a memorandum to the Republican Party about, use this term to negate that other term that would you be used to describe Somebody, it. Somebody's got to do it. But what he said was is that he was supposedly the person that heard the tape. And he said... There, he didn't hear any tape, he, and he never uh, was even asked by Amoroso if, uh, if in fact, the information that she put on page 129 or something was accurate. Well, wait a and, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. She, uh, she didn't say Frank Luntz is the one who she who let her hear the tape. According to what I read no, on... No, no. Uh, 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 read on where? Um... I think it was like NBC. Uh, it was on my phone. No, you know, I don't think it was Luntz at all. It was somebody else that she said she won't name who has the tape. And that she, after she put the book to bed, okay, mm-hmm. she went out to the West Coast and this person had it and she listened to it and she heard it for it with her own two ears. Uh, from, what I, from what I heard, she only heard somebody else who supposedly no, heard it. No, she the said tape. she heard it. She yeah. said, "What well, happened I'll see was if I can find wait a minute. Well, no, Lutz no, wait there. a minute, wait a minute. When she read, wrote, wrote, wrote the book, yeah, she didn't. She hadn't heard it. She'd heard about it, but she hadn't heard it, and that's what's in the book. 
Then subsequently, she went out to the West Coast and met up with a person who supposedly had a copy of it, and this person played it for her, and she heard it with her own two ears. Yeah, well, uh, once, uh, let's see, uh, some, uh, I'll, I'll read this article. Man, did he start swearing at it like crazy? That'd be unbelievable. He probably denied it, even with his own voice. Well, you know. Well, Luntz says Omarosa is a liar and the book is made up. But uh, but Luntz uh, is also a Republican operative. Oh, Omarosa stands by book claim about Frank Luntz after he calls it a flat-out lie. So Luntz... No, but uh, what, what did she say about uh, Luntz in the book? It, 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 yeah, she, she says Luntz. She, uh, uh, let me read this one, uh, Frank. Uh, Gee, he's reading something for a change, folks. <laughs> It's. It, I believe that the the deal was uh, with Luntz. If I push on this, it's probably going to make me look at an ad. No, but what I'm <laughs> saying is, is that it is a reference to Luntz in her book in reference to the uh, the the tapes that included the N word, or is it in reference to something else with Luntz? I believe it was the tapes that included the N word, but I'm going to read the article because again I never heard sure. that Luntz had any any uh, ownership of those tapes. Yeah, that's because you only listen to the Communist News Network. Uh, <laughs> wow, you, know, you believe anything? Uh, this is oh, it's the Washington Times. I'm reading. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, well, it's oh. all the news that's fit to print. Uh, yeah, yeah. We we just made this one up, so Phil will read it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, talk about something else, and I'll see what I can find. Yeah, I'm talking about something else. Yeah, um, uh, but um, uh, what, what else? What else is happening in the news that we? Oh. Uh, I got it here. It says, uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, he says, uh, Luntz says, I'm in a book on page 149. Omarosa claims to have heard someone who heard me that I heard Trump use the N-word. Luntz tweeted, uh, not only is this flat out, false, flat out false, I never heard such a thing, but Omarosa didn't even make an effort to call me or verify. Very shoddy work. Okay, uh, but forget, anyway, Frank, Frank Luntz. forget Frank Luntz. My friend Penn Gillette, when he was doing The Apprentice, heard him use the N-word repeatedly to a point where, as, as uh, uh, Penn put it, uh, uh, it made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I hmm. Does he have tape? Uh -huh. What? Who? No, he doesn't. Does he have tape? No, but he, he but no, but what he said is, I absolutely believe there is tape because there was tape rolling at the time. Okay. Who who is that? Uh, who is that Luntz? I've heard the name, but I got lost. Frank Luntz is a, is a guy who's a pollster, but he always worked oh, okay. in the service of Repu of the Republicans, uh, and he was also he would also come up with uh, phraseology and so on, catch phrases for them to use. Don't call Thank it you. this, call it that. You know. You know, he could have he could have been the guy who came up with fake news for all I know. You know. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 But yes, Patrick. When I heard about Omarosa, I was thinking to myself, anybody who takes her seriously have got to be the same people who hated her before, just like they hated Scaramucci. And then when he came out and talked shit about Trump, everybody thought that he was the next coming of Christ. And now everybody believed this goofy bitch the same way. Now, if she can produce a tape, I'll believe it. Until then, I don't give a shit. I, I don't disbelieve your friend, Penn Gillette. Yeah. He doesn't have any tape. Um, but I would believe him before I'd believe her because she goof since the outset. And now everybody's supposed to believe her. She can kiss my ass. Yeah, well, I... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm the same as that goof Scaramucci. I mean, I remember everybody... We had people on this panel when Trump was elected. What a, what a slime bag, this, that, and the other. And he was elected. All of a sudden, anything he said was gospel. I mean... What, what well, I, 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 I take issue with you on this one, uh, Patrick, because Amorosa is so disliked that even Democrats are saying, you know, you have to take what she says with a grain of salt. You know, obviously, we, we'd love to believe her. 
But you and you're right about you know Scaramucci uh, when, when he was saying bad things about Trump, all the the uh, liberals were gone. Did, did oh, he humble. ever say bad things about? I don't think he did. I don't, think, don't he did. think he did. I don't think he did. I don't did. think he did. No. And and I think he's doing a good job on Fox News. I, I you know uh, he's he's a commentator. I wouldn't know. I don't watch Fox News. Yeah. Well, uh, he I think he's doing a pretty decent job. And uh, he's pretty level-headed. He's certainly not going into any cursing tirades. Did you hear? I was thinking maybe of running for president of the United States. Who? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Stormy Daniels' lawyer. Oh yeah, Avenatti. Michael uh, Avenatti. Avenatti. Uh, there is a rumors he's he's posturing, like he's going to like run for president. Uh, well, he's he's just looking for more advertising, but uh, well, actually, uh, what what do you think, Ray? What would you think of Avenatti running <laughs> against Trump? I mean, I think I think he's a, he's a very persuasive person. I think he's persuasive in what he does, but I don't know him beyond being the lawyer for Stormy Daniels. I don't know. Sounds like a be. I, I think I, he's I a weasel. Know, I don't know what he could do beyond that. Why is he a weasel? I, I, don't, I don't know if he's a weasel. I mean, why, why is he, he a weasel? He reminds me of Peter Strzok, who got his uh, just desserts today. You know, or, okay. or yesterday. An honorable 35-year veteran of the do, FBI but, lost his job because the President of the United States had him pushed out. Yes, yeah, Patrick. Somebody's uh, microphone Steve. is uh, bleeding. Yeah, let me uh, mute that because yeah, I'm getting home anyway. So it's always need, uh, Steve. Of course. Yeah. Avenatti has close-set eyes, just like Strzok. You know, you, you can't trust those guys. Well, you know. Trump has small hands and a small dick. You can't trust those guys. <laughs> I, I don't have to. I don't have to shake his hand or fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Who was I was watching? What the history of comedy or something? And some comedian said, uh, and this had to do not with Kim Jong Un but his father, because it, that's when the whole thing was taped. Uh, the, 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 and he said. Uh, you know, you can't trust a guy with a Napoleon complex who comes from a country that has people that small. <laughs> <laughs> Was he talking about Cambodians? He said, how small do you have to be to be have a Napoleon complex in North Korea? <laughs> but if everybody's that small, why would he have a Napoleon complex? Uh, I, I, well, that's well, the joke. Trump I'm thinking yeah. too much. By the way, they did this thing this week. They, they, anybody been watching this history of comedy on CNN that they're doing? Oh, yeah. um, this week they did uh, people who were dead, comedians who were dead. Pretty funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, they they didn't. Um, they did. Uh, it got my friend Bill Hicks was was there. Uh, was listed there. And a whole bunch of them. And after it was over, I looked at girlfriend and I went, in that whole hour, the two omissions. No Sam Kinison and no what? Lenny Bruce. Yeah. How can you miss, if you're doing a, a documentary on co comedians who died, how can you miss Lenny Bruce? Can't. Yeah, he's true. Yeah. I mean, he should be number one, no? He should be number one, yes. That's disrespectful. Wow, that's crazy. They talk about Richard Pryor, I hope. No, I mean, you know something? Knows. That's yeah. another one they missed. They missed Richard Pryor? <laughs> yes. That's for next okay, season. That's screwed up. I mean, hey, that'll, be, that'll be the next true. next uh, they series. They, How about Andy Kaufman? They, have Andy they, Kaufman. they, they, they missed they Andy Kaufman. Oh, Jesus. God, you're coming, up with all the, you're coming up with all the ones they missed. They missed all the good ones. Well, they, they had Robin Williams, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but but he's not Carlin. a comedian. What about, did they have Jack Benny? No, probably, right? He would be well, no, I mean, uh, let's, uh, you know, let, let's uh, have a break-off time. I mean, obviously, if we start naming uh, George yeah. Burns and uh, 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 Jack, Jack Benny, Benny and people like that, they're all dead. But, you know, when we say people who died exceedingly young or in tr tragic yeah. situations... Yeah, Kinnison died in a you car crash. That. Lenny Bruce, an overdose. Uh, uh, Andy Kaufman died at like 32, 33. Yeah. Who was uh, that uh, heavy set comedian that was very uh, physical that died at 33? Well, no, but that, that, that he was mentioned. Chris <laughs> Farley. Chris Farley, yeah. Chris uh, Chris Farley, yeah. Farley. You know, they mentioned but, him. But you're right. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't mention Andy. How could they not mention Andy Kaufman? 
How can you not mention Andy Kaufman? John Candy? And he changed everything. I thought you were talking about John Candy, too. Well, John Candy oh, also. Yeah, John Candy. They, man, they right. mention him as well. Okay. You know, but yeah. you, you know the fat comedians are going to go young. You know. John Belushi? Yeah. Overdose. Overdose. Yeah. Um, yeah. One? Yeah. You know, I mean, but I mean, it was it was a nice tribute to people, but for crying out loud, you left out. And then there were a couple of comedians I never heard of in my life. They did show my friend Robert Schimmel. They they man, mentioned Schimmel, mentioned Hicks. Yeah, you know. um, I mean, Schimmel was a crazy death. Schimmel had cancer, and then he got cancer again. He wrote a book called Cancer on Five Dollars a Day or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then he got cured of that, and then he got some problem with his liver where he had to have a, he had to get a liver transplant. And while he was waiting for the transplant, he gets in a car with his daughter who rams the car into a telephone pole or something, and he dies. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, that, to me, is the strangest thing because, I mean... I always knew that he was sick from one thing or another, and then he was, you know, maybe he wasn't going to last too long. All of a sudden, he, somebody says, Oh, you heard Chimmel's dead. I went, The cancer. cancer finally got him, huh? They went, No. His daughter oh. drove the car into a tree. Oh, wow. That's uh, kind of like uh, Grace Kelly. Uh, didn't her daughter, uh, uh, she was driving, there was a car accident in Monaco, went off I, a cliff. Was, was, it, or was, was Grace yes. Kelly driving? Was, wasn't Grace? No, no, it was the daughter was driving. Uh, princess, um, I forget which princess it Caroline. was. Hmm? Caroline? Caroline? Yeah. It might have been. I, I'm not sure. There's two sisters. Yeah. yeah. I'll let and you I, don't, I don't know which one it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's got to fuck you up if you, you know, yeah. killed, killed your father in a car crash. That's why I never let mom. my kids drive me. I won't let them. <laughs> <laughs> me, I don't want them to be burdened by that. My kids <laughs> just drive me crazy. <laughs> but if she knew that he was going to die of cancer anyway, I mean, does it really make any difference? Well, he might have been able, you know, uh, they, they do I'm change kidding. out livers. You know, if he had liver cancer, I mean, some people survive it. Uh, yeah, that's or, true. Well, that he, need, he really needed, I think he needed a, he needed a, a kidney, tra a liver transplant, a kidney transplant, something like that. But, yeah. uh, uh, and then here, here's the horrible thing about, about Schimmel's life. He, when I first met him, he had a son who was dying, oh, a, a child. He was, the kid oh, was like nine, nine or so when I first met up with Schimmel. And he was out on the road working every day of the year because they didn't have any medical insurance, and he had to pay for all these treatments for the kid. And no he, GoFundMe. And he took this kid. No, he took this kid wherever he went, and he and he, you know, he it, it was this, but it was this whole thing. And the kid finally died, so there was that tragedy. And then he and his wife, who had stayed together for the longest time, because the kid was dying, finally broke up. They had a daughter. He still had a daughter left, but uh, and he went and, and uh, ran off with the uh, with babe, with the babysitter. How's that for a cliche? Uh -huh. Grace, kind, Grace kind Kelly like, died. Grace Kelly died when she was driving the car. She was like, driving. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. No, oh, no. okay. I, 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 I thought the daughter was driving. Shit. Daughter oh, was in the car though, right? Yeah. Car. Yeah. Yeah. Windy roads. Windy. Uh, wind, maybe windy roads. I might have misread it. I don't know. Yeah, windy roads. She drove off a cliff. I've been on those roads, and they uh, yeah, are windy, no, it, and they are steep. It's the it's the uh, uh, the second level of roads that come out of uh, out of out of. I know I know the, the roads. Tunnel. In fact, if you watch, if you watch to catch a thief with Grace Kelly, uh, he's driving down some of those roads, and you can see how you could have an accident on those roads. Yeah. Wow. But there's the Bosch Corniche, and there's the Prime Corniche, and the Prime Corniche is where I think she had her accident. You don't know what we're talking about, do you, Keenan? I do. There's a I'm bunch of old, old farts <laughs> talking about uh, movie actresses who they knew existed. Uh, I'm an old fart, too, you know. <laughs> now, how old are you, Keenan? 
I'm going to turn 55 next month. Really? Well, he looks 25. You look better <laughs> now than most of us are going to look five days dead. <laughs> 55? You know. jeans. <laughs> You're 55? 55? I thought you were like 25. <laughs> what do you got? A, pic, a picture of Dorian Gray behind yes. you? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. In fact, you're you're uh, you're older than uh, than Patrick, and you're older than. Uh, uh, yep, uh, than, I'm an old fart compared to them. Than Tony. He's almost as uh, old as Scott. I'm 56, so I got you, mate. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't think he's going to catch up. <laughs> or something. Is that do you color your hair? Nope. But I've got white coming up. That's for sure. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I see it. I see it. <laughs> see yeah, it. I'm one errant <laughs> hair. <laughs> now, what is your background? Are you from Thailand? Did you say? Is an alien? No, I'm, I'm a Chinese American. Chinese American. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, so, hey, do you know the secret to Chinese food? Why you eat it and you're hungry two hours later? Oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bada boom! That was bad. Uh, do you know I'm never I'm never hungry two hours later from Have Chinese food. Yeah. They don't eat the Chinese food, Alex. When you go in the store, they don't eat the food, right? Do you eat that type of food? That's American Chinese, right? Well, yeah, I, that's okay, not, that's all right, all right. When food. I when yeah. I uh, was a kid, I worked for a thing called the Chinese Food Express, delivering Chinese food. Yeah. And part of what happened uh, there is every night they would let us eat whatever we wanted to eat at at the uh, at the takeout place. The reason being that they didn't want us to steal it. Okay, so they would just feed us. I got so sick of Chinese food. Working for the yeah, Chinese Food Express, I couldn't years? eat Chinese food for about five years after that. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was, and on top of that, the the smell of Chinese food seeped, in, smell. seeped into all my clothing. Oh, oh yeah. yes. So, what was your favorite dish? Yeah, what was it? Bowls, I I always liked uh, the uh, the fried prawns. Oh, they, they couldn't make you eat pork either, huh? Oh, I would eat pork. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make the Jew eat pork. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to him uh, for free. He's trying to get you to eat the pork. Yeah, no, but I, I, uh, I, uh, you know, what we did do though, we we stole anyway. What we did is we had a, we had a staple gun we brought with us, yeah. and we would go out and deliver this food, and while we were going out, if we really wanted a snack, we just open up the package, take something out of there, and then staple it shut again. Oh, it was a side. Seinfeld. Or a Larry, um, uh, uh, what's his name, episode about oh, somebody table. stealing the prawns out of his takeout. Really? Uh, uh, do you remember that one? Was it Seinfeld? Or was it? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Where's Kevin yeah. tonight, Kevin? Where are you? You look like you're in San Francisco. I can't believe Phil just asked that Chinese food question. What <laughs> <the> <laughs> Doesn't everybody want to know? No, because no. <laughs> <laughs> because I always feel stuffed after I eat Chinese food. Where, where are you exactly? There's no eggs and egg roll either. <laughs> <laughs> where, I'm down in uh, Cannery Row in Monterey. Where's oh, Kevin? Nice. Kevin, where are you right now that we're seeing? He, he, he said Cannery Row in Monterey. Oh, really? <sighs> yeah. Oh, very famous place, especially in, in Steinbeck in, Stein, uh, in, in Steinbeck land. You got yeah, a I full house. Do we have a Steinbeck full house? Right we do. Now. We have this a, is the we're... Intercontinental Hotel here. See that there? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Real fancy place. One of the most famous Steinbeck <laughs> books was <laughs> Cannery Row. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty nice night out down here. I yeah. thought I'd call in when yeah. Phil I, made that. I, I got to tell you, though. I, Bring us some seafood. Hungry? I'm bringing some seafood. I know, some I know this counter. is going to make me, to Scott Bodiger, sound like a pussy, but the heat is just starting to get to me. I'm going crazy from the heat, and not from the heat itself, from the air conditioner. Yeah, and and, and the other night, a girlfriend, she, she doesn't understand the basic operation of an air conditioner. Oh, God. She <laughs> thinks if you turn it I've down. I've been listening to this for a week. I know. I know, <laughs> but I can't get her to understand that what you do is you set it at something like 76, and then when it goes 
uh, above 76, uh, the heater, below 76, it cuts off for a little while until it needs to start cooling again. And then you kind of get an average temperature going on in the room. Instead, she turns it down to like 70, and then it's never going to turn off. And I go in after the show, and it's like I can't get to sleep because like there are icicles forming in my nostrils. It's like a locker in the bedroom. Yes. Kevin, you've got a little bit of ambient noise. It's like my woman's bedroom. I put it on 61. Let me move it real really quick. Right. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, Jack. Jack you Bishop is You wish that your wife set the temperature as high as 70. Donna keeps the house so cold <laughs> that we have friends that will not stay with us when they come to town because it's too I, cold. I would have no problem. I just Why to is out. that? Why do women yeah. do that? It's hormonal just, after a certain point. Uh, after Why a certain do point, men like it? Uh, 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 they like it like at 80. You know, I've I've gone into people's houses. I don't like it at 80, but I like it to be comfortable. I don't like it to be uncomfortable. And I tried to get in the. I finally had to go into the guest room with her and without any air conditioning, and go to sleep in there because I, I it was so cold in the bedroom I couldn't sleep. Mm. You know, a couple of times this summer I have actually slept under two blankets because things have been so cold in my house. I'm sitting in our in our bedroom <laughs> watching TV with a sweatshirt on. You probably had a club. You, you made you come over. He's got a turtleneck. <laughs> you and you know what? It's got to be cold. And you got big rooms. And it's and I can hardly wait to see the electric bill this month. Oh, Canada's gonna love you. You gotta get a Christmas. Because I switched out our I switched out our our uh, ten thousand BTU for another one we had in the house. It was twelve point five BTU. Okay. Uh, and so that's got to be eating up a little more electricity. And she's got it on stun all the time. <laughs> she's trying to free shower. Except that well, she's, it, it, she's doing a good job of it. You know. Whatever yeah. happened to the comfortable room temperature was 68 degrees. Right. Oh, for her? That's, that's a, a 68 degrees? Uh, it, 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 no, she wants 64, you know. Yeah, well... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they used to say the comfortable room temperature was 68. Yeah. Well, uh, I remember Phil that Carter, uh, like, well, uh, during the energy crisis, yeah. he said people, wear a people sweater. People were thinking 72, and he said, no, set it down to 66 to 68. So you're not and wear a so much heat and wear a sweater. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so, I mean, what, so what's, what, uh, what does Marjorie keep the uh, thermostat at? You said 64. But well, I've finally gotten her to put it at like 74, but it still doesn't turn on and off. She says, I don't like the air, the air conditioner go on and off, on and off, on and off. But I'm going, but that's how it works. Did you look Otherwise, into those? It's a waste. Did you look yeah. into those? Well, say say that again, Ray, so she can hear it when she listens to the program. Marjorie, you're wasting electricity and causing uh, global warming. Exactly. Okay. Did, did you look into that evaporative cooler? Uh, uh, that you put the water in and it. Uh, no, I've, it, it I've, I've, I've used those. They don't, you know. I've been in here, come on. Yeah. It's like you don't know. It's it, it's it's terrible in the, New York. They'll right do up now. to 500 square feet. It's supposed to be 90. It's supposed to be up to 90 degrees again tomorrow. I know, uh, Jack and 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 Scott. I'm a pussy because how how hot was it today where you were? Uh, 87, 88. It's oh, been okay. very cold here, actually. I actually wore a sweatshirt this morning outside. Really? What was it, 85? I don't know. It was like uh, <laughs> in the 70s. Well, the 70. mornings could get cold in, in Texas, and then it's it the afternoon. It was a little rainy, yeah. but yeah. Oh, it was oh, today we had thunder, man. Oh, I was going to record it just for, so you guys have, could hear. You see, Mr. Bennett, you have thunder. We have thunder here every time it rains. Yeah, well, you, well, just about every time. Yeah, we're, you, supposed you to, we're supposed to have another thunderstorm again tonight. Oh, I hope. Yeah. I hate that thunder. I hate that. Yeah. I don't like it, does it? Yeah, well, it's, you know. It's, uh, how's, how's, the weather, how's the weather out in Wisconsin, uh, Patrick? Has it been hot? It's been great. It's been about 88, 90. I'm happy as hell. Why are you happy as hell? Because I'm in a wheelchair and snow sucks my ass. So yeah. any weather other than snow, it can be 50 below zero and I'm happy. 
90 degrees, I'm happy. Whatever. As long as it's not snowing. I so, see. I, What's I, I sweat my balls off, and I'm happy as shit. In, in Wisconsin, <laughs> there was something going on with Scott Walker today uh, in the primary election. What's what's going on with that in yeah, Wisconsin? With our, with our uh, climate. We're deciding who is going to run again. Yeah. If you wave real hard, you can see Renee from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, hey. That yeah, I sounds like. I hear what you were saying, Scott. Uh, I mean, Patrick. Hey, Bennett, I heard you talking about you uh, did takeout. You were the takeout guy at a Chinese restaurant. When I took Donna to San Francisco for the first time, mm -hmm. I made the mistake of taking her to a authentic Chinese restaurant. You know, not that, you know, Americanized Chinese. Would you go to Sam Woe's? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's where they yell at you. Edsel? Do you remember Edsel at San Woes in the 80s? The oh, the yelling, waiter? Yeah, he yeah. yell and scream at you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Six-year-old, go that table! I don't have time for this shit! <laughs> so, we used to so, go there and get abused. You cannot share. <laughs> you cannot share food! <laughs> so, so, <laughs> you know, a bunch of racist pigs. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> I, I swear to God. Yeah, so, yeah. So anyway, Pardon me, we have Keenan here. He is China. Chinese, after China. all. Did you ever go to Sam Woe's, Keenan? Uh, yeah, a few times. <laughs> You're 55. I'll so you tell you something. When I, when, when, I was, when I went to China and we went into a Chinese restaurant, there was nothing familiar there. That's right. That's They don't cook in China like they cook. Am I right, uh, uh, Keenan? It, it's totally different. I'm, it was kind of funny because I remember when I first landed in uh in Beijing with my friend, I said, okay, we can't say we're going out for Chinese food. We're going out for food. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're not going out for Chinese food, right? <laughs> you know, Anybody you know where there's American get around one here? From column A and oh. two from column B? Oddly enough, the best thing that I had that I just ate like crazy wasn't even Chinese. It was uh, Vietnamese. It was Vietnamese. It was noodles in black bean sauce. Yeah. Oh, good. God damn it. I, that, we kept going back to this place. place. I would order it like crazy. What? This isn't Chinese food. And I said, no, you're having Chinese food probably for the first time in your life. Well, everything's... This is the kind of Chinese food I wanted. It, Why did you bring me here? In Italy, I don't think maybe you can get them now, but they never had round pizza. Hmm. Uh, it was always square. Yeah, it was like always the Sicilian. Square. The Sicilian, yeah. Basically. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Ray. When I went to China, in Beijing, the the restaurants on the side streets would have cages with animals in them, and you could, like, choose your animal that you wanted to eat. And they had yeah. monkeys, and different kinds of rodents, and all kinds of stuff. What we, no, I didn't do this. Of course not. Well, we have an area here in New York. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We <laughs> have One an place had a big dog in a cage. We have Sorry, an area here in New York. We, yeah, we have know, an area here in New York, which is prime. Wait a minute. We have an area here in New York, which is primarily Chinese, uh, called Flushing, which we call Flushing. And uh, I thought that was a Jewish neighborhood. Uh, Flushing. Yeah, no, it's Chinese now. And and yeah. we went to Flushing. one place. Uh, with Marjorie's boss, who's Chinese, you know, from from uh, actually lives right. in uh, in Shanghai. No, not in Shanghai, in Singapore. And he uh, lived in Queens. But he took us into this Chinese uh, um, grocery store, and they were selling live, huge turtles. Oh, they get to cook them. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, if you grow up eating turtle, it sounds like a good idea. Just like I that. have a turtle story. Uh, back, back in the day before ATMs, yeah. uh, I didn't have any cash. And my friend and I, we, we didn't have any cash on us. And the bank didn't open until Monday. And, and so uh, what we did was we rummaged around my kitchen. And I had a can of turtle soup and a can of new potatoes. And that's what we made. And years, uh, years later, he, he bought a can of turtle soup to commemorate that, that day. But now, 
you cannot buy turtle soup in this country. It's an endangered thing, and That's you can only get imitation turtle soup. Was it oh. mock turtle soup? Get yeah, mock turtle soup. soup right? I yes, imitation turtle, turtle soup. Yes, Jack. <laughs> uh, back in the night, my stepson worked for a company that was opening up a new facility in Beijing. Mm -hmm. And so he goes to China. And the poor kid is so shocked because the most popular restaurant that he encountered in Beijing KFC McDonald's. McDonald's. Well, it's KFC now. KFC. Oh, at least they've stepped up. My God, you know. God, when I went there like 25 or 30 years ago, they had a two-story pizza hut in Beijing. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I heard a podcast the other day about uh, the first McDonald's that was built in the Soviet Union. And it seems as though it was so difficult for them to do it because everything you needed to do, you needed a permit for. And uh, it was it, 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 the bureaucracy was was beyond terrible. But they got it built, and they had to have security guards because there were so many people that wanted to eat McDonald's after they after they opened it up. They had to have uh, security guards to keep the line straight uh, in the Soviet Union. But wow, yeah. I was down in Costa Rica a, a few years back, and uh, the the first thing the tour guide told us as we were coming into San Jose, Costa Rica. Now, the Burger King is over there. <laughs> you know, and I'm going, I guess, you know, I just flew 2,000 miles and you want to send me to a goddamn Burger King? What the hell is this all about? Colon blow. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Kevin, Kevin, what is that colon blow? Well, shopping. <laughs> it's Oh, he's in a joke store. Oh, okay. We're in a candy shop. Colon <laughs> blow. <laughs> Eat <Yeah>. me. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, Here's some Trump candy. candy. Why is it only Ray Rosh comes on my show with remotes from interesting places? Here's some sweaty balls. Sweaty balls? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some dick, dick in the box. box. <laughs> Oh, dick in a box. Isn't that kind oh, of Oh, you like know something? Person? This is all... I, we, do me a favor, uh, Kevin. Look at that stuff uh, and see if there's any cop, uh, copyright on the stuff. Because I think that's all oh, SNL God. stuff. Oh. <laughs> SNL, there you go. What, what does it say? Yeah, it's got SNL. SNL. Yeah, you got the sh sweaty balls, dick in a box, uh, colon blow... Ambiguously gay dude. Yeah, ambiguously yeah. gay dudes. Yeah. Oh, so they're so they're being sweaty balls. They got a fuck you candy bar. You're number one. What is that? Oh, that's a. It's a. Looks like a lollipop. It's like a flip. Oh, what's that? What is that? I don't know. Edible underwear. Edible underwear. Candy G string. Yeah, candy G string. Yeah. You know, it, that would be terrible if I went out with a woman and she said, come on, let's have some fun. I have edible underwear on and I have to tell her, well, I'm on a low-carb diet. <laughs> yeah. Is it gluten-free? <laughs> Is it gluten-free? Hey, penis? <laughs> penis. Yeah, does it just like chicken. Yeah. What does it say on those? What does, it say on, your, what does it say on your underpants? May contain peanuts. <laughs> penis. <laughs> Peanuts. Mm. You can say mm. penis. So I wouldn't go that low with a joke. Crying out loud. Yeah. Jesus. Um, hey, I'll see you guys. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Jack is going to go uh, do his show, sponsored by Colon Blow. Uh, <laughs> Jack is off. <laughs> Jack's serious. off. Yeah, Jack's off. Okay. Jack's Down off. Nine. Let's 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 uh, take Jack off. That's the end of your full house. Are we? Are more people watching now? Huh? I don't know. Let me see here. Remove this person from group. There we go. Well, it doesn't remove them from the group. Okay. Remove person from group. There we go. And uh, in case you just joined us, uh, Kevin is in a uh, novelty store. 
in Cannery Row. I don't think Monterey. John Steinbeck, when he, when he wrote Cannery Row, ever figured that there's going to wind up being a store like that with colon below in it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's a candy store with all kinds of weird shit in it. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I've had enough of this one. I'm going to get out of here. Do yeah. they have a diabetic section? I'm I sure a, they do. I, I have a friend who's probably the colon blow section. I, I, I have a friend who's coming up to stay with us from uh, Florida. I won't say who, but I will have them on my show. Um, and they said, "Can we bring you anything?" And I thought for a moment. Stone I said, crab. "Yeah, bring me a manatee." Yeah, really. <laughs> Can't go near them. <laughs> How big are manatees? Oh, I, I've seen them. They're they're they're, uh, they're, they're like they're slow moving. Uh, yeah, sea cow. Yeah, they look a lot like Trump. <laughs> I thought That's they true. looked like Hillary. Well, Hillary isn't fat. She's just. Do you see her legs? She has cankles. Yeah. Well, so do manatees. Yeah, manatees don't have cankles. Yeah, they got these fat little things that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see here. I had a couple of items here. I, oh, I, I, yeah, I'm back in the truck. I'm going to head out. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, let's say Enjoy goodbye to right. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate it. Have a good evening. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? So, um, uh, you know, ratings for golf haven't been that good lately. And now it seems as though the ratings for CBS's coverage of the PGA Championship went through the roof. Uh, going playing. up, yes, 73% from 4.9 million who watched the final round a year ago. What is the difference? Tiger Woods is playing and is doing well. I thought he was in the 50th uh, position. Well, no, that's no, that, that's that's in national. That's uh, in the world. Was uh, then he was eighth in this. Uh, no, he came out second. Uh, oh, really? He came out oh, second. So he improved. Yeah. yeah, he almost won. Uh, wow. uh, it reached 8.5 million viewers for Sunday's round, up 73 wow. percent. So apparently, Tiger and, and my wife always said, you know, she said my reason why I watch golf was Tiger. You know, and I think that he, when he plays and he's playing well, that bodes well for uh, for golf on television. When I watch golf, it's because I want to pretend I'm comatose. What I don't get is why the announcers <laughs> for golf, whenever they're doing a golf game, sound like this. Now here comes really here comes Tiger up to the uh, up to the putt, and you're thinking to yourself, these guys are in a booth somewhere. Why are they whispering? To add dramatic effect. To add dramatic effect. We don't want to make noise because. Are no. they actually in a booth or are they? Well, they're uh, certainly you know, nowhere. Uh, they're, cer there. they're certainly nowhere near Tiger. They're not following no. him around the golf course. It would require them but, to travel to every hole. It, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in a little what? In a little golf cart? In a little so golf they, cart. Yeah, they and they talk to each other like this. Don't don't make too much noise because Tiger might miss the putt if we talk too loud. Yeah. yeah. Here we are in Augusta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Cinderella story. <laughs> it's in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering. We got about three minutes left. And I have not, I've run out of stuff to talk about. There's not, a, you, know, you know, I, I find myself, I can't watch these news networks anymore. Well, they get can you do a Bill Murray impression? They get one. Oh, no, 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 no. They get they get one <laughs> fucking story. They get one fucking story, and then all day long, it's the lead <laughs> story. They just can't let go. Oh God, it's so repetitive. It drives you nuts. Yeah, and if I one more time, I heard Omarosa talking with these people today, and the other day it was Omarosa uh, with Trump on the phone. You know, okay, that's fine. As long as I've heard it. I heard it on the last show and the show before that and the show before that and the show before that. But she's pretty good looking, you know, and uh, 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 I'd rather see her than Maxine Waters. Uh, oh, yeah. Really? You're going to bring it all down to a sexist comment like that? 
Well, I, I also thought it was bigoted. Maxine but, uh, Waters <laughs> is a very beautiful woman, in my opinion. Yeah. Because she is beautiful in the mind, which you like is that where wig, it huh? counts. What? You like the wig. Well, is, she, is she wearing a wig? Doesn't she wear a wig that uh, looks really phony? No, I I think that's oh, it's oh, almost, which one is that? It's Lee, al- Barbara it's, Lee. It, it's almost any any um, uh, congressman in, in Washington. They yeah. all are wearing some of the worst toupees I've ever seen. Which yeah, one do you want? I'll take the one everybody else has, yeah. the John Kennedy number fifteen. Yeah, you know? and then they wear these yeah. horrible horrible rugs. Jeez, doesn't you know some aborigine out in the middle of, of Australia if he. Showed up. Come to my, would look at this, come to my look carpet at, store. I could do better. Would look at these guys <laughs> and point at them and go, wig. You know, I mean, it's just <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. It's yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm going to sleep early tomorrow night, so it's going to be fill free Thursday and fill free Friday. Okay. When's your operation? Uh, Friday? Thursday, 6 a.m. And so we need the rest of you to take up the slack. If anybody's calling and has a heart condition, it would be appreciated. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> Bennett's waiting room. Patrick? It'll be a completely conservative free Thursday, because I won't be calling either. The Packers are playing. Uh, oh, okay. The Fudge Packers are playing. But, 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 you, but, but you can probably call tomorrow night to take up Phil's slack. To take up Phil's slack. But, I can play a conservative when Phil's not here. You can, you can oh, play anything. You can play Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be I'll just be a conservative. Yeah. Yeah. That works. That sounds I'll, I'll wear a wig. Kirk's conservative, isn't he? Who? Uh no, S G. S G. S G. But S G's also insane, so Well listen, <laughs> Phil, you know, no matter <laughs> oh, what uh, Captain Kirk? <laughs> Captain Kirk. Yeah. Oh yeah. No matter what we wish you the best, you know, and uh please keep in touch so that I I know, I'll call you, when I get you know, out. and if if so, by some chance you die, keep in call touch anyway. anyway, okay? Yeah, <laughs> well, absolutely. You know, we'll, if you call me somehow, we'll, have, we'll get the Ouija board out. I think you're, you're gonna, not gonna I, die. I think you're gonna no, be. You're gonna I think he's gonna be just you. fine, and I think he's even gonna say how good he feels after it's over with because uh, we saw you got a little color in your face just in the end. Actually, pretty good. I felt great after the first one. Yeah. But now that I got my NRA hat made in China, <laughs> yeah, I'm. Very hot. Yeah. Don't bring that to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Scott, thank you for calling. Ray, always a pleasure. Please call tomorrow night, cause, and you too, Scott, because it's going to be a feel-free night. Same thing with Patrick. Tony, you give us a call too. Phil, best of luck to you. Keenan, Thanks. give us a call tomorrow night too. We love hearing Keenan, from you. Yeah. Talk to you. And hey, Steve, maybe I'll be able to call from the hospital you. bed. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Steve, for calling. All of you, give a big okay, wave bye-bye. goodbye so they can uh, they can see your shiny faces. Shiny faces? What am I saying? Shiny faces. Anyway, that's it for our uh, our program tonight. That's all she wrote. And I had coffee tonight, so now I'm going to have to take a Xanax to put me to sleep. How about that? <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. I'm going to be back again tomorrow night. Uh, meanwhile, it's Jack Bishop next over most of this same gab net, followed by um, Connections at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night at uh, 8.30, it's the Franchise MC and our sports show, The Arena, followed by Damian Chaplin with the exchange at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow night, we'll be here. 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye, everybody.